Hi, this is Abdul Bharti and we are here at Open Networking Summit in Antwerp, Belgium. And today we have with us Eric Norman. You are LFH tech member and also chief architect at Zadida. Tell us a bit about what does Zadida do? We, we are addressing what some people call the deep edge or the enterprise edge, in some cases the on-prem edge. So edge computing is a fairly big domain and people have, you know, are approaching different aspects of this edge. So what we have been looking at is the, the area where people end up deploying, whether it's in an industrial setting, you know, there's a single industrial PC sitting in each machine in the factory, or out in the, out in the field where you have a, you know, solar farms, wind farms, turbines, pumps, whatever, things that are quite distributed, and people want to deploy edge computing capabilities out of those, those places and have a way of actually managing that at scale and operating it. How different is deep edge or on-prem edge from the edge that we traditionally know? Well, if you look at sort of taking things out from the cloud and going out, in the cloud you have a very regular environment. People have physical security right around the data center. They have you know, network security around it. There's typically fallback mechanisms if something goes wrong, like someone can just you know, bike down the aisle or whatever, walk down the aisle and fix something. You might have fallback networks to be able to reboot systems. When you go and deploy things out remotely, it could be that its sole connectivity to the rest of the world is over an LTE connection, maybe with satellite fallback. In other cases, it's Ethernet or whatever. But you don't have that same physical control of it. Uh, it could be sitting in the ceiling here managing you know, the, the environmentals in this building, for instance, or in a factory. And in that case, you have to be concerned about physical security. The network could be different because it might be in a place where people could attack it over the network. And people could also approach it physically and, and touch it, plug in a USB memory stick, what happens then, right? So these set of, of concerns actually are quite different and unique to that, that type of deployment. If you look at, drill down more into some networking details, it's actually quite common that people don't control the network they have. In the cloud, it's all provision set up to be efficient, et cetera, and they know what's there. If you just say, I'm running a, an MVNO, I have some connectivity over LTE, well, I might not know what I'm getting, right? I can get IP packets through, but maybe there's NAT boxes doing translation. So the, the, the whole sort of environment is a lot more challenging. So we looked at that saying, okay, how could we make it as easy to deploy to this edge, you know, deploying your VMs, your containers, whatever, to this edge as it is to deploy things in the cloud so that the developer that wants to roll out their apps they don't have to worry about all of these infrastructure issues. Right. And uh, Zadida also contributed one of the projects to, to the Next Foundation LFH project. I think it was one of the anchor projects. Yes. So, so just what was the origin of the project and why you decided to contribute to? Yeah, so, so we're one of the anchor projects for LFH. Uh, sort of, uh, we're focusing on this industrial IoT sort of on-prem edge. And when we started the company a couple of years back, we looked at, okay, what do we want to accomplish here? How do we want to sort of change the world, right? What is it, are the challenges here? Well, it's actually about moving the state of the art and in terms of security, in terms of robustness. And to do that, we need to have as wide adoption of this piece of technology as possible. You can think of it as, you know, when you go and build a piece of hardware to deploy at the edge, well, what's the thing that you put on that piece of hardware first? Well, in our mind, you put Eve there, and then later you can decide what applications, am I gonna run Linux, am I gonna run containers, am I gonna run Windows, IoT Edge, right? The different things you might wanna deploy out there, but in our mind, you first put Eve because it gives you this foundation that you can then deploy different things on top of it. Um, and, and in that vision, in order to accomplish that, we say, okay, we want as broad as possible adoption of this across industry. And then as a company, our, our view is that, well, there will be room for us as well as for others to say, you need to have a management system for this. It calls home to this management system. And we have an open source uh, companion that is sort of showing what the management system can look like. But we also have a commercial offering as a management system. But all of the things that go out on the edge is actually things that we have contributed to open source as part of LF Edge. And what are the core components of EVE? So in terms of dealing with this for the technology, 
there's me, people can go look at the, the website describing it. There's some drawings there as well. But some of the key challenges is um, making sure that you can deal with things like patching, and that includes sort of replacing yourself, right? So the way people typically do this, whether it's on your laptop or on your phone, you always have a fallback saying, if something goes wrong when I update my phone, I will bring it to the store and someone will get to fix it. And I can do some magic key things on my phone to reset it. Well, this thing is sitting out you know, in a wind farm, you never want to have anybody go out there just because of some software issues. So even if there's an update and the power is cut while you're updating the flash, right, which is typically sort of a fatal error in most cases. In fact, in our case, there's this, this way of actually having it do self-update in a robust way where it will actually just fall back to using the old, the old version that it was running and sort of you can continue then recover from there. Um, in addition, dealing with the network connectivity, being able to say, how can I, the applications that are written from the cloud assume that we're just getting a, a virtual ethernet, right? And, and out at the edge, this might be provisioned by using LTE. You might have VPNs that bring the stuff back to Azure um, or to the AWS cloud or whatever. But the application isn't aware of that. So provisioning all of those things in terms of connectivity and making sure that even if you change the, 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 the configuration of the connectivity, you can still manage the system. It will still try to reconnect to the management system and fall back the previous network configurations if that's necessary so that you never you know, have to go out and visit it. You never turn it into a warm brick sitting out there that you, you can't do anything with. Then on top of that, we have sort of, okay, now you need to deploy these, these applications. So we have, we're covering both the sort of the range from existing VMs, virtual machines, containers, as well as more future looking things, things that are called unikernels, which are basically very small um, units that you can deploy as microservices. So um, we are defining something called edge containers as a way of capturing that di diversity. So that's one of the things that we're defining as part of uh, Project E. Before we move forward, I have two questions. Number one is, what are the typical use cases uh, for Eve? You know, uh, like does it cover all kind of edge use cases? You did mention it's for enterprise, but can you give some examples? Yeah. So, so the places where it fits very well is when you're deploying these one C two Cs. That I have something that sits in a wind turbine or managing some compressor or pump that's far out, right? Um, it could even apply in, in factory settings where I have some set of robots or other machines on the factory floor, but of any particular machine, I might only have one or two right, inside the factory. And now the, the provider of that equipment, in terms of doing software maintenance, they want to do that stuff securely and remotely right, and at scale. Um, so that's the type of things that's the sweet spot for EVE. But it, when you look at the larger ecosystem, so if you look at LF Edge, there are different components in LF Edge that are addressing different parts of the Edge software stack. And it's very well reasonable to say, well, if I'm going to deploy things even at the telco edge, and if I need this capability of sort of having an, a layer on top of the hardware that takes care of the basic onboarding, security, robustness thing, well, now I can do, go deploy other things on top of it. But that's sort of not the initial you know, that's not the sweet spot, the design center. It's more about that very distributed one, but it applies quite broadly. What is edge container? How different is it from the con regular containers? Well, it's part of it is just capturing the different formats, right? That you don't want to say that everything is a container, a Docker container, whatever, but you want to be able to support that thing. But the other thing you want to capture is sort of unique things about connectivity out at the edge. So one thing that the, the way people, things are de built in the cloud, they assume that everything you talk to is over Ethernet. Well, out at the edge, the application might need to talk over a serial port, RS-485 speaking Modbus to talk to some legacy equipment. Or it might talk over some you know, industrial radio or whatever, right? Or even things like SIGBI, more sort of home setting type things. So, so that's a connectivity thing that you need to provide. And as part of specifying your container, you want to specify that metadata. In terms of connecting back to the rest of the network, 
In some cases, you just say, well, this thing should just have sort of standard you know, connect connectivity to the internet. In other cases, you might, as part of specifying the container, the edge container, say, oh, this thing should have this VPN connectivity back to my VPC in the cloud. Or we ha even have support for something called overlay networks when you want to do east-west communication between different, different applications, different microservices deployed at different parts of the edge, right? But that, that's the type of things that you specify as part of the, the edge container. From a security perspective, um, by default, you also specify firewall rules when you go deploy it, because you don't necessarily have a firewall that's part of the IT infrastructure out at the edge. So instead, when you specify the edge container, you say, oh, this thing should only be able to talk on port 443 to do uh, HTTPS, for instance. And it should only be able to talk to this set of IP addresses or domain names. That type of thing. So those are things that, that we believe are quite unique in terms of deploying things at the enterprise edge. These are like containers, but it's specialized for uh, yeah, there's, and networking there's, and all those things. It's the same container format, mm -hmm. but there's additional metadata to go with it that, that sort of has to fit in with the needs of this, the environment out at the edge. Now let's go back to uh, EVE project. Yep. Why did you decide to open source it and donate, contribute it to LF? And at Zadida, how much open source do you guys do? How important is open source to you? No, this is a key thing to our, our strategy in terms of both sort of improving the world, right? Saying that, well, if everybody was running EVE, I think that we would have a more robust and more secure edge, right? But also from the perspective of, well, we want to make as many people as possible use this to create a large ecosystem where we can then offer services from a SaaS perspective managing this thing. So, so this was actually a key thing from day one. The other th part of the thing that plays into this is also the hardware diversity. So there are many, many vendors that produce um, IoT gateways or industrial PCs type things. They're all slightly different. There's a combination of Intel and ARM today. There might be other sort of processors that show up uh, down the road and enabling that ecosystem the same way that Linux has enabled that stuff for desktops and then servers and laptops and whatever. It's the same thing that, you know, and the way Android has uh, enabled a large ecosystem of phone manufacturers to build things, they all run Android, they're all slightly different in terms of their hardware, but enabling the same type of ecosystem um, that people can actually build hardware for as well as build software for and insert that layer of of abstraction between the hardware and software. And I think the LF Edge was announced early this year in January or something. Yep. Like that. So can you talk about the, the the evolution, the maturity of the project in these last last uh, seven or eight months? So so I mean LF Edge uh, as it came together have several anchor projects. Some of them are more mature, um, like Acrania and EdgeX Foundry. So Eve is a is a relative newcomer in this picture. Um, so we started and we contributed our code to LF Edge uh, um, in, in April. And we are, you know, we built up this community um, and we're inviting more people to come and join the community. So there's a fair bit of interest. People that want to do different things and figure out how it fits in with, with what they need from an application perspective, as well as from different software infrastructure components. For instance, we decided when we built this that we're building it for security reasons using a type one hypervisor. And we picked the Sun hypervisor, which is a quite mature one that's used in data centers. But there's other people that are looking at um, having Eve use different hypervisors. So you're gonna actually choose, just like in many open source projects, right? Which components do I put together to build my, my, my solution, my system? Um, so we're welcoming other people with contributions that want to you know, take and expand their stuff, whether it's just supporting different hardware, right? Um, advancing things, the state of the art around how can we actually do secure or measured boot and at the station and doing that stuff across Intel as well as across ARM processors. So the community is actually quite small right now, but uh, we actually see that growing because there seems to be a lot of interest of going after these problems. So. Right. And what does, I mean, of course, I'm not asking about the roadmap because it's an open source project, but what does your roadmap look like? Or, you know, what are the challenges you are planning to tackle in the next, you know? So, I mean, there, there are a couple of things on the, on the security side that I hinted at, like doing measured boots, supporting that, so they can actually do remote attestation, so that 
without turning the thing into a brick, you could still have the controller that it connects to when it dials home say, well, your measurements indicate that something might have changed in your firmware. That's a bit odd, right? And then it's up to the controller to figure out what is it supposed to do, sound the alarm, just have this thing not run any applications, whatever, right? So that's one piece that we're building into Eve to, to uh, have that capability. There's other things around network connectivity where the ability to use different networks, sort of what people have been doing in the networking world, but with an edge perspective where you say, I want to do active standby, I want to have um, LTE as a fallback if the ethernet goes down, right? if my wired connectivity goes down, and how to actually manage policies in that space if I want to spread the traffic and some of the, the, the network connectivity is not free, etc. So there, there is several things in, in that domain. We are working on refining the edge container specification in terms of this metadata. So that's another thing that we have you know, started in, as part of the project um, and figuring out how does that fit in with, with existing sort of container specifications as well. Thank you, Eric, for talking to me today. And I look forward to you know, talking to you again just to get an update on the EVE project. Yep. Thank you very much. <laughs>